Hello, everybody. Hi. We're just going to give everyone a couple of minutes to get settled in. So just join. You'll just see our smiley faces. You might know this Smile. guest. <laughs> we also just want you guys to know that we have access support. Um, but I'm just going to wait a little bit until more people have come into the room before we have our amazing interpreter introduce herself. Oh. How exciting. Oh, 131 participants. Ooh. Hello, 131 participants. She's 140 already. 140. Yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. And let's not forget the 14 amazing people in here, but I'll introduce them in a second. Yes. How exciting. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm excited. And how's your hat? My hat is brilliant. She's actually said hello as well. I don't think anyone's heard very good. It's very furry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to, I don't mind introducing Vivi twice. So hello everybody. Welcome to the Poetry Workshop live stream with Michael Rosen. Um, we have access support here today. So we have our BLS, um, yeah, BSL, sorry, BSL interpreter, um, Vivi. Um, I will give her the opportunity to introduce herself. Thank Please. you, BB. Um, we also have manu uh, manual captioning here. So if you click at the bottom, you'll be able to get captions that will pop up for your convenience as well. Will that be like subtitles? Yes. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> One, Wait, two, two, three. Did that come up on the screen? We One, two. We didn't click the bottom. You have to click oh, I see. the bottom. Got to <laughs> click my bottom. No, sorry. Click the bottom. I get my bottom. Okay. Um, and we now currently have 172 participants. 172 high. Yes. Um, so yeah, we'll just let people join in. Um, but and I don't mind introducing everything twice, just so everyone knows who we are. Hello, my name is Koi. I work for 64 million artists. Um, I do a lot of fun stuff, but today I am super fortunate to be joined by an amazing guest. He will introduce himself. How you doing? Uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. So my name is Michael, Michael Rosen. Uh, I'm a writer. Um, that's one of the things I do. And also I come around places and perform my poems. I also do things like we're doing today, which is uh, a workshop. And I also do a bit of teaching um, and I do some broadcasting. I'm sometimes on the radio, uh, BBC Radio 4, doing a programme about words and language. That's me. That's amazing. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. No, it is really amazing. And today I'm really excited because we are 10 days into the January challenge. Um, and you are the creative mind behind our creative prompt today. Right. OK, but I'll for, do my best. Oh, you're going to do amazing. I already believe Thank in you. you. <laughs> but for those who do not know what the January challenge is, um, I could tell you guys and then I'm sure Michael can add a bit of information as well. I'll do my best. OK, so it's, the January challenge is 31 creative prompts that happen every day of January. They come from amazing, brilliant people and communities from across the UK. Um, and you have the opportunity to participate in all these prompts however you like. All you have to do is kind of all you have to do is sign up to um, our daily emails um, and the information will be shared in the comments as well. So, yes, I'm really excited and we're really excited because we have you as our 10th creative prompt. Lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm going to be a 10th creative prompt. I don't think I've ever been called that before. <laughs> I am Michael 10th creative prompt Rosen. Wonderful. Yes. And our creative prompt today is around poems. Uh, poems, it can be, you don't have to necessarily think of them as poems, it's just a way of writing, a way of writing about something. And do we reveal what that something is now? I think let's just wait for a couple more people we'll to wait. come in. Yeah, let's build up suspense. Yes, why not? <laughs> suspense, jeopardy, peril. Yes, <laughs> that's what they always have on TV serials. They always have to have peril and jeopardy, things that you fear and wonder what's going to happen next. Does, like, does suspense always have to be scary? It can be exciting as well. Oh, it can be. Yes, yes that's a point. But you want a bit of jeopardy in it. Where you, how many of you like writing stories? Any of you here like writing stories? Yeah. Well, one of the things always to think about when you're writing a story is to put a bit of jeopardy in it. That's mean that something might go wrong. Yes. So when the reader is reading, they worry with the person who's the, the hero, or maybe it's a group of people. All right. And so they worry. So if you introduce Jeopardy, and some people call it peril, that means when it's really a bit dangerous, but 
jeopardy or peril, great element to having stories. I love that. Now, some people are thinking, who is Michael talking to? We are actually live streaming from Thomas Tallis, um, high, um, primary school. Oh, I'm so sorry. From Thomas Tallis School. So can you guys say, make some noise? <laughs> We're just warming them up. But we... That was about 2,000 of them there. It's incredibly loud. So sorry about that. So we have 14 amazing students here with us well, today. But we also have um, two primary schools who will be joining us and we will be zooming into them later on in the episode. So, yeah, we're very excited. We have so many more people that have joined us. We have about 200 participants. I'm just going to reintroduce everything. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Koi. Um, today we are here with Michael Rosen, who is going to be walking us through today's creative prompt on the January challenge. This is a poetry workshop. We also have accessibility support. So if you need any caption services, click the link at the bottom. And we also have the amazing Vivi, who is our British Sign Language interpreter. Um, and could you introduce yourself again, please, because people have seen you. <laughs> hand dancing. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And it's so good to see people joining from all over the world, actually. Oh, really? Yes, we have, I think, I, well, Bath is in the UK, but we definitely have Switzerland. Bonjour, la <laughs> I think, oh. Guten Tag, Schweiz. Nottingham as well obviously that's in the UK but that's amazing guys I'm just going to call out India as well Hello, India. Suffolk where Suffolk Suffolk that's yes. in England yeah <laughs> Cardwell Cornwall yeah we run to that yeah the west coast of Ireland oh Bristol I feel like I'm at a rave hello everyone <laughs> hello west coast of Ireland I watched a program about the blaskets last night on, off the west coast of Ireland yes all right, fantastic. Well, I am super excited to jump straight in. Mm -hmm. um, so like we said, for people who don't know, this is part of the January Challenge, which is a month of creative prompt brought to you by amazing creative minds across the UK. Um, and today's creative prompt comes from Michael Rosen. And to make it even better, we are going to do the creative prompt with him as well. So yes. And obviously, would you like to talk us through your creative prompt? Yes. Well, what we're going to talk about today and think about and write about our first memories. So you might want to go into a little bit of a trance as you think about the very first things, very first thing that you can remember. I'm guessing you were probably between two and three years old, probably somewhere round about that age. Maybe it's several things, maybe it's several scenes or something like that. Um, I'm going to mention some, maybe some things that I, I can remember in a minute. But to start off with, just sort of take yourself to that space, that place, that moment. And it may be several, that's fine. And just think about it. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What sounds can you hear? Maybe you've got memory of a smell of some sort. Maybe you can see some faces. Maybe there's no words with it yet. You're going to maybe have to put it into words because some of our first memories, they can just be almost like a feeling, yeah? If you want to jot anything down, you folks here at Thomas Tallis, while I'm speaking, you just scribble away. It's not one of those days where you mustn't write while I'm talking. You write away. And again, all of you back there, as I'm talking about first memories, maybe it's your time at nursery when you were at nursery school, or maybe when you were being looked after by your nan or granddad or somebody like that. And you've got some memory. Maybe you can see a floor or a beach. Maybe it's a holiday. So you jot some things down. You see, Louis. This is me. I'm always jotting things down. Can you see that? There you go. There's like I've jot, jotted down some things there. It says chimney pot, hairy blanket, mutton. Now you see that won't mean anything at all to you, but it means a lot to me. So that's the great thing about jotting things down. They're almost like sparks, little words, little things that you do that can spark in your mind something that you're going to maybe write about in a moment. Yeah. So Michael, tell me about. The first question that comes to my mind is, what are your earliest memories? Well, here we go. Ooh. Chimney pot, hairy blanket and mutton. Oh, great. And I'm going to whiz through them. And if they remind you of anything at all, then you scribble down something while I tell you a little bit about these. So at my nursery school, I went to a nursery school. And I think I first went there when I was less than three. So I was about two and a half. There was a climbing frame outside. And in the middle of it, there was a... A sort of extra bit like a tower 
that they used to call the chimney pot, but I couldn't say chimney pot, so I apparently I used to call it the chimbley pock. So all through my life, I've known this as the chimbley pock. And my friend Jimmy, who was from Ireland, who I really thought was a wonderful guy because he had a suit. Not many three-year-olds have suits, but he had a suit. And when he put his hands in his pockets, his jacket used to fold over the top. I used to say to my mum, I wish I had a suit like Jimmy's got. But anyway, Jimmy could climb the chimbley pock, but I couldn't because I was scared. So my moment, if you like, is watching Jimmy climbing the chimbley pock and him saying, come on, come up, come up, come up, Michael. And me going, no, no, I don't dare. Mm. OK, so that's putting myself into the moment. I can tell it like it happened. That's the way we talk about the past, isn't it? Things like happened. Or I can be in it. I can be in the moment and go, I'm on the climbing frame. And Jimmy's saying to me, come up, come up, Michael. And I'm saying, no, I'm scared. That's one way to write. Remember that. That's called writing in the present, like, like you're doing a commentary on yourself. Next down, I've got Hairy Blanket. Ooh. At nursery school, they did this terribly cruel thing. I mean, really, really cruel. They said we had to go to sleep in the afternoon. It's one of the cruelest things that have ever happened to me in the whole of my life. They said, you've got to go to sleep in the afternoon. I thought, what's, a, what's this sleep thing? What's this sleep? I don't go to sleep when I'm at home. Why should I go to sleep at this place? But it gets worse. If you think that's bad, it gets worse. You know what they made us sleep on? During the Second World War, there were what called there were what there were what was called army beds, and they were made of canvas and with wood frames, and they opened them out, and they were really hard and kind of gritty, okay. And you just lay on it on this hard gritty thing, and you know what they gave you then? I'm going to shock you now. I'm scared. I don't think you're ready for this. Okay. The hairy blanket. Ah! Not the hairy blanket. Yes, the hairy blanket. No, not that. Yes, the hairy blanket. They said we had to lie on these army camp beds and put the hairy blanket over you. And, and I used to lie there with my eyes open going, I hate this. I hate this. I hate the hairy blanket. I hate the army camp bed. And I'm not going to sleep. And I used to lie there like that. And I didn't go to sleep because I hated it. So now... That's again in the present, but I could maybe write something where I repeat hairy blanket, because that gives me a rhythm, hairy blanket, hairy blanket, I don't like the hairy blanket. And the teacher comes along, I used to call her Hornby teacher, because I didn't know you were supposed to call her Miss Hornby. So I used to call her Hornby teacher, and Hornby teacher comes along and she says, Michael, time to go to sleep. I don't like the hairy blanket, hairy blanket, hairy blanket, I don't like the hairy blanket. You see, so I'm getting into like a rhythm there, and I'm repeating things. So that's the hairy blanket story. And then the last one, I'm afraid, is too disgusting to tell you. Oh, tell us. Well, are you ready for it? Are we ready for it? Okay. Yes. It's also a nursery story. So the lady, the dinner lady said, for dinner today, for, they used to call them school dinners, didn't they? They didn't call them lunches. For school dinner today, you're having mutton. Does anybody know what mutton is? Yes, yeah. you know what mutton is. Yes, yeah. so it's older sheep, right? We tend not to eat it these days because we, they, well, they, they just tell us we eat lamb if you eat meat. You see? But in those, in, in the olden days when I was at school, they gave us old sheep, right, which they used to call mutton. And I didn't like mutton anyway. And then they brought it in and put it in front of me. And it was like a chunk of bone and some sort of greasy gravy. And Mrs. Perkins said, uh, that's your lunch. And I said, I can't eat, I, I can't eat that, I'll be sick. And she said, no, 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 you have to eat your mutton. See, I'm getting into a phrase now, eat your mutton. And I'm going, no, I can't eat the mutton. Eat your mutton, no, I'll be sick, no, eat your mutton. I ate the mutton <laughs> and I was sick. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say it as a three-year-old, but as it were now, I'd say, well, didn't I predict that? I mean, three-year-olds don't tend not to speak like that, but, you know, did it, isn't that what I said? I said, so in went the mutton, <laughs> out came the mutton. <laughs> and um, so there's my first three sort of memories, strong memories. There's another one of a beach, but I can't, 
find it. All I've got is the sensation of it. Mm. Sand, water, heat. Mind you, you could write that, you see. If you've just got a very vague memory, you can write sand, water, hot. Stop it being hot. Water and the sand, sand on the water. You make it like a little song or a little rap. Just water, sand. Yeah, that's lovely to write that as well. It doesn't have to be long. It could just be, you know, five, six words, ten words. That's that's great. And you could just put a ring around it on the page, and that is what it is, and you could do a picture with it. So though I've told you three sort of stories, you can just make it a sensation. Poems are great for sensations. That's where you just say something in the thing that it is. I wrote a poem the other day about my belt falling off the table because the buckle pulled it off the table. Mm. And then it fell on the floor and I said, it's sleeping, not dead. My belt wasn't yeah. dead. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. So you can sometimes make things just very, very simple. So sand, hot, hot sand, hot sky. Yeah, just simple words like that. You can put them one under the other. I call that unfolding, where you unfold one line, like you're unfolding a folded sheet. See, hot sand, sand hot. Can you see my hands? Hands, so you go, sit back, say hand. Sand hot, hot. What about the sea? What's your feeling about the sea? You see, I can see the sea. Don't know how to describe that for the moment. I have to play with that. Yeah. All right. So there we are. There's four ideas, four if you like. So sometimes you can be in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can make it very simple. Sometimes you can just tell the story if you want to. That's absolutely fine as well. You could do pictures with it. So there we are. These are first memories. Okay. Well, that's really inspirational because that immediately makes me think of my first memory. But I won't share that. Well, go on. Let me ask you then. What's your, what's your first? Okay, Michael. <laughs> yeah. The first thing I kind of imagine, remember um is this massive wet pink mattress and it had this furry coat around it I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert it turned out to be a really big dog but I just remember its tongue I remember how big its tongue was and I was terrified I'd only seen humans up until then so I remember being excited and scared and then I was scared for I was scared of dogs for like the next 10 years but now I love dogs but I just remember a really wet tongue <laughs> um, <laughs> for many many years but if like me you have ideas about your earliest memories um I hopefully you've started to use some of the techniques that Michael has shared whether it's unfolding or finding a rhythm or kind of if I remember correctly kind of sticking to a particular word that comes up again and again um Look and what like, I've written. Oh, okay. massive wet pink mattress it was a dog tongue Look at that. I'm a poet, guys. I didn't even try. Well, that's it. You see, sometimes when we say these things, vocalize it, we say the thing, and then sometimes just the way it comes out, sort of fragmented, where you said massive, wet, pink mattress, that's the way you said it. Yeah. It's a lovely rhythm to it. Massive, wet, pink mattress. Repeat it. Massive, massive wet, wet, pink mattress. mattress. Massive, wet, pink mattress. 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 It was a dog. Tongue. Tongue. <laughs> so fifth crow wrote. <laughs> now, well, you wrote that, but I've just, if you like, what I've done is sort of distill it. You know, mm. that means where you take out the sort of bones of it. So when you write things down, you can take out the bones and you can spread it out over the page so you can, you can, you can do it. So we could put there times three because we repeated it three times. There you go. Or we could write that out three times, you see. So oh, there we are. That was brilliant. I but could I'll... just see that massive wet pink mattress. Can you see it? I did to start off with, and then suddenly it turned into a dog. Yeah. So it was a transformation. Now that's lovely because that's a realization. Yes. Transformations are great in poems and stories. People have been doing this for hundreds, thousands of years. A big posh word for it metamorphosis. You know that when eggs turn into caterpillars and caterpillars turn, blah, 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 turn into butterflies. Well, we do that in stories and poems all the time. We have things turn into other things. Yes. Maybe you know the play Midsummer Night's Dream and you have a queen of the fairies and she falls in love with somebody whose head is a, a donkey because he's been transformed. So there we are. And it's a nasty trick that Oberon, the king of the fairies, plays on it. So there we are. So there's a transformation there. Massive wet pink mattress, massive wet pink mattress while you're staring at it. Mm. Did the dog move? Did it? Oh, yeah, it was coming right at me. Yeah, it was coming right at me. Um, it was a really friendly dog. It wasn't actually that big, but I was really small. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> so that you're was about it. that big, yeah. Exactly, even smaller. Yeah, yeah. Um, tiny, tiny. 
But hopefully some of your early memories, you've started to identify them. And, and we really want you to do this creative prompt with us. Um, I really yeah. think it's an amazing opportunity. We have amazing students in front of us who look like, I think they've, wrote, they've already kind of put down their first initial ideas, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, and I, want, I hope at home you guys have as well. If you have any questions, we will be answering questions at the end of the session. Um, but yeah, keep creating. And if you want to make, some people like to make things rhyme. Some people love rap as a form. Remember, with rap, you quite often have a what's called a four-beat line, which you can sometimes make shorter into a three-beat, occasionally two-beat. All right, but the basic form of a lot of rap, certainly the early rap, was a four-beat line: to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. So four beats in it, which you can have. So you can count the beats if you wanted to make it into a rap, like a kind of early first memory rap. That would be great as well. You don't have to write like I write, been doing today. If you prefer that, you could have a go at that as well. That'd be another way of writing. Yeah? yeah. Lots and lots of ways of writing. So you can steal all these different ways of writing from other people. I do that all the time. You steal a lot. Oh, yeah. I'm asking. I'm asking no, no. If you, ways of writing belong to the world. Mm. Yes. You know what a template is, don't you? You know, when you have on the computer, you have a template for a document. Well, all these different ways of writing like a limerick, there was an old man with a beard, he said, it's just as I feared, two larks and a wren, an owl and a hen have all made their nest in my beard. That's a template for a limerick, yeah? Or if you write a silly poem like, down behind the dustbin, I met a dog called Jim, he didn't know me and I didn't know Jim. Dave. Yeah, oh, sorry, no, <laughs> got, got that wrong. So there's another template, a da 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 dum da dum da da dum da dum da dum da 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 dum yeah. Roses are red, violets are blue. Most poems rhyme. This one doesn't. <laughs> no, that's not right, is it? I see a lot of pens down. And Michael did suggest that he may ask, but you do not have to come up. Does anyone want to share their poem? Well, we let's, shall we get, have we got time to write? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, come course. on. We've got, yes. we've got, let's have a little bit of hard working. Let's get a little bit of head sound time. Get into the dream mode. Daydreaming is very important for writing. Get into a daydream. I'm going to pick one of mine. I think I'm going for the hairy blanket, I think. Okay. Yeah. So away you go, folks. All you folks watching, give yourself some daydream time and start putting down some words on the page, any shape, any way you like. Yeah. Here we go. I'll give everyone about 10 minutes and we'll check, check in and out. Feel free to send yeah. questions in the chat, but just get lost in it. Mm. I'm going to do some too, even though I'm really nervous. <laughs> so I'll talk through what I'm doing, but I hope it doesn't distract you too much. So I thought I'd start with Hornby teacher saying to me, Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. So I, said, I can remember that being said to me. So I think, I almost feel like wanting to put that in a speech bubble. I'm not very good at drawing. But... So that's coming from over there. Yeah. And then my thoughts are the army camp bed. one thought then there's the hard gritty canvas hard, gritty canvas so are you just noting down key parts of your memory of that yeah that's it so i'm getting these things that i mentioned when i was talking we've got the army camp bed the hard gritty canvas because i didn't actually know it was canvas i just knew it was i don't know whether i'm cheating if i call it canvas hard gritty surface so, I wouldn't have known the word surface either I'm sort of trying to think of sort of child words I want to sort of try and get back to that moment you have called it a bed just as a child yeah I've got bed army camp oh, okay. bed hard gritty floor was it on the floor was it no. on a very surface no it's on the surface of the bed and, mm, I'll stick with canvas for the moment but I think I might have to change that but anyway hard gritty canvas and then under the hairy blanket under the hairy blanket that was an army blanket as well actually now i think about it because this is 1948 or 9 oh. you see 
under the hairy blanket. So they're there and then can't sleep. Can't distinguish in my mind between can't sleep or won't sleep. So that's the beginning I've got there. Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. Army camp bed, hard, gritty canvas, under the hairy blanket, under the hairy blanket, can't sleep, won't sleep. I think I could spread that out a bit more. Um, you said something really interesting about um, wanting to speak like you would have spoke at the time yeah. of your memory. So we don't need to use really big words or no. really intimidating words. We can just use the words that would have made sense to us at that time. That's right. So some famous writers, most notably an Irish writer called James Joyce, he wrote about his first memories uh, in a book called Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. And the first two or three pages where he's doing that, he sounds like a child. Mm. It's very clever. And then as he gets older, you kind of, the language gets older as he gets older. So we could steal a bit of that. You see, stealing the template I love again. love steal from James Joyce, see? So uh, I get to stick with that. Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. We've still got that. Um, I like army camp bed. I think my mum and dad told me they always, always used to talk about army stuff in those days. Army camp bed. Army camp bed. I think we want this idea of can't sleep, won't sleep. I think we want to get that earlier. That might be a chorus. Can't sleep, won't sleep. Choruses are quite good fun because everybody can then say them when you come back to it. Yeah. You see. Now, I've got the hard gritty canvas. I don't think I can improve on that for the moment. Hard gritty is okay. I'll have a think. It's the surface of the see what the thing you're lying on. Yeah. Gritty. What, what did you say when you did your, you said massive pink wet mattress. pink mattress, hard gritty, it's hard not, gritty, not. what about it where it is, it's under my cheek, hard and gritty See, under my one. cheek, ah, so we don't know what it's made of because I wouldn't have known then myself, yeah. I knew it was under my cheek. Hard and gritty under my cheek. Okay. Uh, let's maybe they're pairs. Then we have the chorus. Pairs and the chorus. Hard and gritty. Under my cheek. We know that's the camp bed because I've said it is. Yeah. Yeah. Under my cheek. Then we get whoops. Can't write that. Then we go back to the chorus again. Can't sleep. Won't sleep. Ah, yes, got the shape, so it goes. Uh, army camp bed, army camp bed, can't sleep, won't sleep, hard and gritty under my cheek, hard and gritty under my cheek, can't sleep, won't sleep. Now we're going to get the hairy blanket. So maybe it's my horror of the hairy blanket, not the hairy blanket. Here we are, it's a bit more what we call dynamic. Not the hairy blanket, not the hairy blanket. And then we want the chorus again. Can't sleep, won't sleep. Now I think we need Hornby teacher to come in again. Oh. She says, remember, Michael, we must lie down and go to sleep. Put inverted commas around that. Michael, you must lie down. Whoops. Lie down and go to sleep. And I think to come back with the chorus, can't sleep, won't sleep. And that could sort of kind of go on and on like a fade out like you get on records, you know, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep. Which sort of implies maybe I have gone to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe I did. I don't know. So very good. So now we've got it as army camp bed, army camp bed, can't sleep, sleep won't sleep. sleep. 
Now I've got hard and gritty under my cheek, slightly different rhythm. Mm. Army can bed, hard and gritty. Maybe maybe we'll just uh, hard and gritty. Like that hand gritty. Sorry, hard gritty under my cheek, gritty under my cheek. Oh, what about that? Forget the hard bit, just gritty under my cheek. So just to keep the rhythm a bit nearer. Yeah, let's try that. Army can bed, army can bed. Can't, can't sleep, sleep, won't sleep. sleep. Gritty under my cheek, gritty under my cheek. Can't, can't sleep, sleep, won't sleep. sleep. Not the hairy blanket, not the hairy blanket. Can't, can't sleep, sleep, won't sleep. sleep. Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. Can't sleep, won't sleep. Can't sleep, won't sleep. Can't sleep, won't sleep. Can't sleep, won't sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're like a rap band. I love it. <laughs> All we needed was the intro, which was Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. So that's Miss that's Hornby teacher saying that. And then we repeat that again at the end. So I'll just say Hornby teacher there. Just to know that it comes. Oh no, oh no, she said that. No, we don't want her saying that again because I've gone, yeah, not yet. Michael, you must lie down. Hope everyone's doing well with their own memories. Okay. Right, one more time. Okay. okay you could be Hornby teacher. You say, Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yeah, you are okay. my nursery school teacher. This is okay. wonderful. Okay. Where you go. Michael, you must lie down and go to sleep. Army camp bed. Army camp bed. Can't, can't sleep, sleep. Won't sleep. sleep. Gritty under my cheek. Gritty under my cheek. Can't, can't sleep, sleep. Won't sleep. Not the hairy blanket. Not the hairy blanket. Can't, can't sleep, sleep. Won't sleep. sleep. Michael, you must lie down and go to bed. Can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep. Look at that! That is amazing. That is amazing. What's that called when you, in music when it goes fades away? Uh, diminuendo, I think, isn't it? Does anyone know? I'm going to agree music? with you. Does anyone do music? Hello, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. Did I get that right? There's yeah, rallentando, which means slow down, I think. And then there's staccato, which is dick, 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 dick. And then there's allegro, which is light. And I think there's diminuendo, which is basically fade out. And the chorus in music terms, so those of you who know music, you can borrow these music terms, take them across to poetry, and you have a chorus like that. That's called ostinato. Yes? I've got a music These are specialist big words. There, <laughs> who, by the way, our music specialist here, I just want to share this with you, likes lemon sorbet. Just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so well, uh, there's my poem. Thank you. Um, in fact, I might put that in a book. I that. quite like that. And can't sleep, won't sleep. Ah, here's a trick to make it get quieter. This is what you can do. Watch. Can't sleep, won't sleep. You can borrow this from comics. You see, what's going to happen is it's going to get smaller. Mm. You see this? See this trick? Can't sleep, won't. Sleep. Sleep. And as you do that, yeah, we're going to whisper it. Well, I'm super excited. While, while Michael continues to make us whisper, we will be zooming in to another amazing school. This school is Field Lane Primary School. Um, and I think that's going to be happening in a couple of seconds. We can find out how they've been doing with the... Um, yeah, the look, you see how it's got quieter. Yeah. See, start off, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, won't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep. Love that. All right, so you can use the letters to show feeling. So you, you'll make it so there's a, a posh word for that it's called concrete poetry. Hello. Oh, hello, somebody coming in. Yes, we have Phil Lane Primary School joining us as well. Hello. 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 Hi. Waving. That's always nice. Oh, wonderful. Oh, there's, some, right, there's some other human beings there as well. They look quite big for primary. Are you year sixes or year 26? Year six. You're, are you year six? I'm not year six. No. <laughs> he's, he's I'm not six. year six. <laughs> Hello. How are you getting on? Good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. We so you, really well. you need to come very near to your computer so that we can hear you because so you get near to the microphone on the computer. 
and we'd love to hear your poem or what you've written. Maybe when you are. Iceland. <clears throat> Refreshments behind the waterfall. The sour taste of fish in my mouth. Yuck. The northern lights glimmering in my eyes. A mix of green and pink. Unforgettable colours. Iceland. Hey, fantastic. Love it. What was the fish? Tell me about the fish. What, what, what did you say about the fish? The sour taste of fish in my mouth. The sour taste of fish in my mouth. Oh, yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Iceland. Are there mm. any other poems you'd like to share? Uh, yeah. Niagara Falls. Mum said, wow. Dad said, amazing. I said, wet. <laughs> wet. Wet. Soaking wet, damp and wet, as wet as rain. I am wet. Hey, lovely. So that's a great thing that you use the repetition so you don't have to say I was really wet or excessively wet. So we have that wet is an adjective, yeah, and you have adverbs to make the wet sound more. But if you repeat it, and there's a tradition in languages all around the world, by repeating things, you make it more. In fact, I think some of the African languages, yep. that's it, you repeat, is so you don't have to say very, you can just say bad, bad, and that means very bad. Yeah, and so you've done just that with your poem. That's wonderful, well done. So we've got some, some sour fish and we've got some wet Niagara Falls. <laughs> wonderful, I love it. So who's next? If you step aside just a little bit, guys, and then you, young lady, if you come nearer to the computer, we'll be able to hear you. Yeah, lovely. The changing teacher. From dinosaurs to Christmas trees to gingerbread mans, it never stops. Green dinosaurs, an elf, a unicorn, it just never stops. What will my teacher be today? Wow. Wonderful. We never know, yes. So we've got some transforming teachers there, haven't we? We've got teachers turning into, I don't know whether you turn into other things, do you? <laughs> Maybe, yes, that's right. Yes, so that's good. lovely. Well done. Is there any more poems? Yes, I think we've got somebody next to you. Yeah, come nice and near for us. Yeah. Blackpool Tower, windy beach, dipping my toes in the ice cold sea. Ah, it's cold. Packed arcade, <laughs> hustle and hustle. Happy children laughing crazily. Ding, ding, ding. Come on, next ride. Yeah. Oh, that's like little snapshots, isn't it? It's like little sort of uh, little cameos, little things going on around you. That's wonderful. Yes. That is so good. Thank you guys so much for sharing. And I want you to know 200 people listened to your poems just there and we're all clapping for you. So well done, guys. So well good. Done. 200 people or 200 schools? To probably some schools as well. So probably even more than 200 people. So well done. Wow. Lots of schools. So That's well fantastic. done. Super amazing of you guys. Well done. Beautiful writing. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm thinking about all those unicorns, Tenerife, Niagara, crazy. Bye, guys. Crazy teachers changing. Yeah. We have another school joining us shortly, I believe. But bye. Thank you guys so much. Well done. Well done. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Field Lane Disability. Primary School. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have another school joining us, if I'm correct. That's Rodbra Community Primary School. I can't wait for the poems we're going to hear. Yeah, that's good. That was so good. I just remember wet. Wet, wet. I thought, I thought that was incredible. Yeah, well and then he, but then he broke it up, didn't he? Yeah, yes. did a bit, and then he sort, and then you were guessing whether it would come back to wet, and it did. Yes, that's right. That's good. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, we got oh another school Hello. here. Oh, I recognise your face. That's Joe. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> um, that... in Gloucestershire here. Hello everyone, that is the CEO of 64 Million Artists. Four million Artists looks like only one person. <laughs> we would love to hear your poems, guys. Okay, right. well, nice and close to the computer and then we'll be able to hear it nice and clear. Okay. Say group, I was in a group. I was three and I wanted a wee, but I couldn't go because we had baked beans and we had to dip our feet in beans, 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 beans. I don't want them. I'm running away from everyone's friends. Play good, play good. Why the beans? I can't go in them. I can't go in. Beans, 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 beans. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, Chuck, for me it was mutton and for you it was beans. Yeah. And beans have these terrible effects, don't they, that you don't need to write about. Yes, that's right. I know lots of good rhymes about that, but I'm not going to repeat them. You'll be pleased to know. Yeah, very good. Beans. Yes, and, and who's next? Yes, it's you, isn't it? Lovely. Next. My earliest memory, I set foot on the doorstep of the place where every toddler dreads to leave their mummy and daddy, nursery. I set foot in the place beaming with curiosity when I was soon think, ew, disgusting. I made a few friends and a best who is still with me this second. Trust me, nursery was not fun. Biting and screaming, pulling and tugging, saying, miss, miss, I need a wee. And let's not forget the crusty, rusty, dusty take-home teddy bear. <laughs> oh, no. I love the passion. I'm worried about that teddy bear. <laughs> Sounds worth a wet pink dog. Musty, <laughs> musty, musty teddy bear. Yes. Were you allowed to take it home? Were you allowed to take the teddy bear home? Um, yes, we were. When we, we when children we got them on holiday, we would get to take it there. But it was really dirty and crusty because everyone had just hugged it. Oh, right. <laughs> I've rented a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's crusty as well as rusty and musty. Yeah, lovely. Very good. Yeah, we pictured that. Yes, and away you go, my friend. Yeah. When I was young, I was at this nursery called Polly's with my friend Sarah for Russell. When we got there, I played in the soft play, um, jumping, jumping around, and and so far down the stairs. I was like, no, don't leave me. Luckily, we survived, and we ate some delicious marmite, marmite silky crumpets. After that, we, um, I was, I, I was like, can we go outside? I want to go outside, outside, outside. Lovely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very Great good. Job. Dramatic moments from nursery. I like them. <laughs> Have I got any? I wonder whether there's anyone got any kind of home things, home memories, as well as nursery ones. I wonder. If anybody in the room would like to be very Thank brave. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you guys Thank so you. much for joining. Thank if you for sharing your poem. Like <laughs> well done. Bye. Yeah, if you're ready to. Right. Bye, we have somebody. School. <laughs> very good. We have our lemon addict. So to everyone who is with us. Yeah. And there are loads of schools in the chats as well. I hope you guys are in. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. So you might need to sit down. To so a lot's happening right now. So we have a student here at Thomas Tallis who's going to share their Thank poem. You. But I know there's tons you of poems in the, behind in the comments as well. Us. You come around behind. Um, yeah. So we can't wait to look through some of those. Oh, and you read get some of those. oh you're on Hi. camera. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Echo. Yeah. Well, please to meet you, Echo. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to come in just a little bit near Echo and nice and loud so everybody can hear you? They left milk in the sun. And only when I was done did they tell me. Not fun. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I see Echo, you've done some pictures as well. Can we see your yeah, pictures? Yeah, you could do that. So if you put it down here on the visualizer, then people might be able to see your pictures. Look at that. And you could say your poem one more time to go with the pictures. Here we go. Echo and the poem. They left milk in the sun. And only when I was done, did they tell me? Not fun. <laughs> Very good. Well That's done. Good. Very good. Okay. So good. I suppose you could say, and you won. <laughs> no, no, never mind. It rhymed, you see. No, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, would anybody else like to share? Anyone? Well done, Gecko. Could you have uh, done that in Spanish? Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Wouldn't rhyme, I guess. You'd have to work hard on the rhyme, yes. You could have a go at that. Yes. Very good. Any, it, anybody you know else? Anyone brave? Go on. You can do. Yeah, you think of those young youngsters. They're younger than you. Are you oh. Who's going to read it? You. I can. I've, right. Oh, okay. I can read. So, okay. yeah, right. Here we go. It's climbing under. Very good. I'll have a go at reading it. Okay. Give this one second, Michael. Yeah. It's on your list. So, oh, the second page. So one of the students are sharing their poem and Michael's going to read it. So do you want me to start at step, step? Yeah. Or do you want the intro as well? No, there's two different ones. Oh, the two. Oh, so I'm going to read step, step. Yeah. Step, step. I walk forwards. Peek, peek. I see the little face. Shuffle, shuffle. I poise myself. Poke, poke. 
I feel the little face. Step, step. That's your little sister. Gasp. Yes. <laughs> well done. Very Brilliant. good. Lovely Brilliant. the way you've got the, the tension of it and these little bits in between that are like a chorus, but you change it. Peek, peek, shuffle, shuffle, poke, poke, step, step. Lovely. Well done, my friend. Well done. Very You're getting good. a lot of comments saying that they absolutely love your poem. Yeah. As well as you echo as well. So well done. I'll step back to you. Well done. Step, step. I just love how memorable both your poems are as well. That's so cool. Oh, wonderful. very good. How are you feeling, Michael? I'm feeling elated, <laughs> elated. Um, that these lovely things have come in that, that you're doing. It's absolutely wonderful. That yeah, awesome. brilliant. Really good. Does anybody have any questions? I know some of you have sent questions into the comments as well, so we will make sure we'll do our best to get around as many as we can. Yeah. Oh, okay. fantastic. Questions. Look at technology. Just, have you got your hand up or are you just stretching? No. That's, <laughs> that's all right. That's allowed. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Yes. Why not? It's all right. No worries. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some questions. Yes. Okay. Well, the first question is, how do you go about getting your poetry published? And we have quite a few questions, Michael. Yes. So you take, have to take you all the way back to about 1973. So there's me with a pile of with a pile of poems. And I'm basically sending them round to people who I think might be interested in publishing. them, And they're saying, no, mm. we don't like them very much. So I just went on and on until somebody said, oh, I do quite like those. And I can think of, this was a person said, I can think of somebody who could do pictures. And I said, who's that? And they said, Quentin Blake. And I said, who's he? It's 1973. And they said, well, he's done some pictures. Da, da, da. And so I got together with Quentin Blake and that's how the first book happened exactly 50 years ago next month. Wow. 1974, the book came out, March, 1974. So we are just teetering on the edge of a 50th anniversary, but these days, you can publish poems yourself. You can create a blog just in two minutes. You just go to one of these blog companies that are online and you just, I've got, I do one, a blog, and you can just put a poem up or you can do it on social media with your parents, that is, uh, be careful. And so, or you could uh, recite a poem that you've written, put that up on one of the social media platforms. So these days it's completely different. You can publish your poems straight away. You just put them up there. Then you tell your friends, you tell your family, and you build up an audience, right? So you then build up an audience, and then you want to write more for your audience. So you then write another poem, and then another poem, and then another poem. Maybe you're going to put some music to it. You see, that might be fun. Or maybe you've got a mate who plays guitar, or somebody who plays keyboard. So you maybe and you don't have to sing it. You could just recite the poem over the chords while the person's doing that. Yeah? So you could record that. You just do it on your phone. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we couldn't do any of that when I was a kid. Couldn't do it when I, even when I was an adult. So it's all completely changed. We have another question as well. And I hope you found that super helpful. I feel like you're saying we can we can do it ourselves. We can. We which can. is amazing. Um, another request is, can you say nice? OK, Project? so this I'll do the poem. So we sit down to eat and the potatoes a bit hot. So I only put a little bit on my fork and I blow. Till it's cool just cool into the mouth oh, nice <laughs> and there's my brother he's doing the same till it's cool just cool into the mouth oh, nice and there's my mum she's doing the same I did come from that sort of a home here we go till it's cool just cool into the mouth oh, nice but my dad, my dad, what does he do? He stuffs a great big chunk of potato into his mouth and that really does it. His eyes pop out, he blows, he puffs, he yells, he bobs his head up and down. He even, sorry about this, spits bits of potato onto his plate. <clears throat> and then he turns to us and he says, watch out everybody, the potato's really hot. Did we know the potato was hot? We did. Did he know the potato was hot? No. That was the day that I found out that my dad does not know everything. <laughs> anyway, the nice bit, that bit turned into a meme. I didn't know anything about this. My son filmed me. Some people in America chopped the end of the poem, you know, that bit of me saying that, 
and then suddenly it sort of took off and American kids thought that think that I don't say nice they think I say noise so they wrote a subtitle on it so they could understand it noise spelled n-o-i-c-e and this has gone all around the world and now what happens is I get stopped in the street <laughs> and people come up to me and go it's the mean guy <laughs> and I go well first of all I had no idea what they're talking about I said no I think you've made a mistake I'm sorry no 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 you're the mean say nice hold the phone up got Michael Rosen it's say nice and it happens to me all the time. And then I discovered something. You might be interested in this. I would, sometimes we eat in Chinatown, in you know, in, near Gerrard Street. I caused a riot. People were coming up to me going, it's nice. It's, <laughs> it's that. And I said, sorry, sorry. I said, no, no, we know you. You're famous in China. I said, no, no, you've made a mistake. No, I'm sorry. No, no, you're really famous in China, they said, um, because we see you uh, and we know you. We call you nice grandpa. And I said, what do you mean, nice grandpa? I said, well, we're very respectful to old people, with all due respect, Michael Rosen. We're respectful to old people in China. So we don't say an old man. We call them grandpa. So you're known as nice grandpa. But in, Kant in, in Mandarin, in Mandarin, it's nice yeah yeah. Aww. So I am known. Is it the same in Cantonese, grandpa? Yeah. So I am known, there you go, in China and Hong Kong, as nice yeah yeah. I want a t-shirt. <laughs> Um, nice yeah yeah i'm on the back mean guy <laughs> well we have another question for you a nice yeah yeah did yeah, i say it right you. well you like, asked I, uh, did i say yeah. that okay, okay. Than me, <laughs> the children in oak class would like to know what your favorite poem is well that's one of them there's another one that goes we had a teacher who was so strict you weren't allowed to breathe in her lesson she used to stand out the front and say no breathing well, I'm not going to do the whole poem, but that one, you can see it on my YouTube channel, plug, 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 uh, which is called Kids, Poems and Stories with Michael Rosen. Um, no breathing. Um, and that's one of my favourites as well. I love Did you have a teacher that strict? No, I didn't. They all loved me. And were you allowed to breathe? Um, I was allowed to breathe whenever I liked. Well, the thing was, you see, I was brought up in the Stone Age. <laughs> and this is just at the very end of the Stone Age. And they took out a lovely teacher we had in the Stone Age. They took her out and put her in a skip. It was terrible. They put her in a skip outside. This is in the Stone Age, people did things like that. <laughs> and then they wheeled in this new teacher who was so strict. It was unbelievable. No breathing. <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Kids just used to keel over at the back of the class. <laughs> Oh, it's frightening, it really was. We have more questions. Because... Yeah, okay. okay. so is Michael Rosen's chocolate cake based on a real childhood memory? Yes. Oh, because it's Tilly's favourite. And okay. she says, hmm, belly, belly a lot. Mm -hmm. I think comes up in that poem. It's an interesting word, isn't it? You don't find it in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. But it does happen in that poem. Um, yes, it, it is. Um, I think I squeezed, you can do this in poems and stories, you can take one story and another story of your life and you bring them together. So I did used to get up in the night and, and nick food from the kitchen. So, uh, but quite often that was in actual fact something called caramel wafers, <laughs> which I used to like a lot. Um, and I think what I've done is I've sort of changed the car caramel wafer, I can't say it, caramel wafers with chocolate cake. But anyway, maybe I shouldn't tell you that. But anyway, so you can, when you write, you can mix bits of memories mix them up all right so you must never worry about that you don't have to be totally truthful if you don't want to be i love that we can still and we can lie i love it yeah. um so Ace she's getting it out of me isn't she <laughs> yes that's right you can steal and you can lie well that is the story of writing yes <laughs> ace a tree class in foxfield um have asked in your opinion what is the most powerful device you can use in a poem Mm, most powerful device. Well, devices always come attached to words. So it's a bit difficult to say this device or that device, you know, is most powerful or this form. That's when you use words like limerick or ballad, that's a form. So it's a bit difficult to say which is the most powerful. It has to fit the thing you're trying to say and fix the word, fit the words that you're trying to use. That's the thing. So, you know, you might say repetition is great. But it may not be great for the thing you want to be saying. If you wanted to be saying something that was very 
slow maybe repetition might not be the way you want to do it you might want a, what's called like a long sinewy line and not a repetition one yes mm. uh, so it just depends or if you say rhyme is good but sometimes rhyme is very difficult if you want to say something very serious some people can do it i'm not very good at it but some people are very good at rhyming and being serious uh, but rhyme is very good for comedy say can be anyway mm. um, so you have to pick your techniques devices as you say carefully to make them sure they fit the theme the topic the thing you're writing about and fit the words you want to use yeah great good answer we have another question and I, yes how do you not get nervous when reading your poem in front of such a big audience um it's a bit hard to, uh, to explain that. It's just, uh, I am very, 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 very old. <laughs> and I have been doing this for a long time. And usually, if you do things for a long time, you have been doing them for a long time, let's say 50 years like I have or more, then there sort of isn't really sort of much need to be nervous because mm -hmm. you just think, well, what can go wrong? I've got a brain and I've got a voice. So if I marry the brain to the voice and then speak and I've got memory and experience and it should work. Well, I always think young people, you could learn from that because you've all got brains and voices. Uh, or if you haven't got a voice, maybe you've got sign language, as we can see. Um, and uh, we've got a ways of communicating. Trust it. That's the big thing. Trust yourselves just as you have just as you've done so today and the people we've heard mm. all right trust that and if you trust it you won't be nervous yeah. all right i know it's hard because you stand up in front of people and sometimes in assemblies and so on you know you've got like 400 faces all going mm. like that and they're all people trying to put you off and and so on but if you trust what you've got okay and you're honest to it then that's okay that's good i love that we have one final question but before yes. we jump into it i do just want to remind everyone that today is the 10th day of the january challenge and today was the 10th form today prompt. is the 10th day of the january challenge today <laughs> is the day of the 10th prompt okay. did i do that right you did it brilliantly well thank not as good as you oh, thank could you. we just remember by the way could we just remember that koi's hat <laughs> could we just remember koi's hat it is rather special rather extraordinary <laughs> and i was saying some hats they go on the top of your head and that has one effect but koi's hat frames your face thank you which is brilliant thank so you. i was thinking you could write a poem about koi's hat framing her face yes you could do that and you could also sign up the january challenge yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which has um 31 days of creative prompts just 31 like 31 days and we're already 10 days in you can do them in any order you like but it's really about just enjoying the process uh, and we would love to see your work as well if you hashtag the january challenge on all social media if you like to join the january challenge check out the comments um i'm pretty sure a good friend of mine will put a link in there so you can join it's totally free totally accessible and we would love to have you um so tomorrow's the 11th prompt but for the last question Yes. Mark Horizon. It's just going to be scary. It's terrifying. Worse than a pink mattress. Pink wet mattress. That pink was, wet mattress. I, I, to be honest, when you said wet mattress, I was getting worried. <laughs> okay, because there are reasons why mattresses get wet. I, we didn't go there in the end. We didn't go there. My question is, what is your favourite word? Favourite word? Yes. Hmm. Well, my mother spoke bits of another language. It's a language called Yiddish that some Jewish people can speak. And she knew this language when she was a child. She didn't use it very much, but it's a language that some Jewish people speak. And she would say words and we didn't know what they meant. <laughs> so she would say, she would come into my bedroom. I shared bedroom with my brother, my brother, Brian. She'd come into the bedroom and she'd say, this place, this place, it's a Misha de Monk. And we'd say, well, what's a Misha de Monk? And she'd say, well, this place, <laughs> and then walk out. And we say to her, what's a mission monk? She said, well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a mission de monk. So she wasn't very good at explaining what the words meant. Or she'd say this. She'd say, uh, oh, look, you don't want to go out looking like a schloch. And I'd say, what's a schloch? And she said, well, the thing you don't want to look like. So it was quite difficult to get out of my mind what these words meant. But of those two, I think I'll go with mission de monk. She had lots of others. She had lots of others. Um, and my dad as well. So my dad would say, don't be a knacker. I'd say, what's a knuckle? And that's clever clogs. Okay. So I love all those words, but top of the list, Misha de Monk. Thank you, Michael. 
Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you for being a wonderful host. Oh, thank you. I do want to say a massive thank you to Thomas Tallis School. Yes. You guys are incredible. Thomas Tallis. The best vibes. I want to say Thomas thank you to Tallis. all the schools that have joined as well. It's a palace. To everybody who has Thomas joined. Tallis. It's a palace. <laughs> So everybody that has joined, I'm sure Michael has a poem for every single one of you, but just imagine it. Um, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining the January challenge. Um, and yes, make sure you keep creating with us. Continue to join us on Jan in January as we continue to do different creative prompts and just enjoy creating because we are all creative. Once again, thank you to Michael Rosen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Keep creating. <laughs>